do genetics play part in whether dogs get IVDD or is it um, you know nature and nurture? There's a bit of nature and nurture, um, but as a breed, they are inherently more prone to back problems. As I said, they're 10 to 12 times more likely than any other breed to, to have them. And there's, um, there's plenty of research that suggests it also runs in families. So some of the early Danish research, they looked at particular pedigree lines of Dachshunds and something like 62% of um, the dogs in a particular family actually suffered from the condition. And um, certainly my own experience, my wife and I had uh, some miniature smooth-haired Dachshunds and um, in that fam family line, they had a, um, a higher prevalence of back disease. Other people have got lines where they've actually never had a back problem. And it does vary across the different varieties of Dachshund. In the UK, we have six varieties. There's the two, two sizes, the standard and the miniature, and we have the smooth, the long and the wire coats and you would be significantly more likely to have a back problem in the smooth and the miniature smooth, and significantly less likely to have a back problem with a standard wire and a standard long. So there's absolutely something about the genetics um, associated with it. There was also a research paper published, I think the first one was probably 2012, where they identified a mutation on chromosome 12, which they believe is associated with uh, IVDD and there's another paper produced by uh, UC Davis a couple of years ago which identified a second mutation on chromosome 18 and um, the combination of those two chromosomes increases the risk of back disease in, in the breed. Unfortunately um, although there is a DNA test for it uh, the research that we've done, we've looked at about 100 dogs in the UK uh, and our Danish colleagues in the Danish Dachshund Club have done the same. Uh, there's very little variation in um, the, the breed. So the DNA test is not really of any use to us. Virtually every dog that we've looked at is homozygous for both mutations. So that basically means there is very little genetic variation and you can't actually use that test as a way of determining which dogs are likely to be higher risk or lower risk. The test would show that every single dog was homozygous for both of those mutations. So genetics definitely plays a, plays a, a part in it. Um, and environment also plays a part. We did a lifestyle survey in 2015. We had about, I think it was 2,000, 2,500 dogs. We looked at lifestyle factors that could be associated with back disease and keeping your dog thinner rather than fatter, well exercised, fed on a good diet um, and not over exercised as a youngster. All of those factors, like with any other other health health condition, you know, well fed, well exercised, well looked after is is obviously important in trying to reduce reduce the potential risk. The other factor that we identified, which was a, a bit of a surprise in that study, was that dogs that had been neutered uh, were about twice as likely to suffer from back disease than dogs that were left entire. And it's more of a risk in bitches. And the younger you have them spayed, or the younger that you have the dogs castrated, the more likely they are to have back disease. So our strong recommendation is that people should avoid having their dachshunds uh, castrated or spayed, certainly before 12 months. And um, ideally, if they, if they can leave it a little bit longer than that, that would um, uh, appear to reduce the risk of, of, of herniations. The other really bizarre finding in that study in 2015, the more Dachshunds you have, the less likely they are to have back disease. So a really great incentive for people to have lots of Dachshunds. Up. <laughs> Don't think anybody needs any more incentives to have multiple. <laughs> um, so if people are looking to get um, Dachshund puppies, um, should they sort of ask their breeders and think about a little bit the parents and their line and genetics? Yeah, I think um, to be sensible, you do need to be asking breeders about what their experience of back disease is. Um, it's, it's, it's highly variable. That's, that's the part of the problem. We do have a, a screening program in the UK and um, it's, it's been going for about four years. There's very few dogs um, that have actually been through that screening program at the moment. And we're currently in discussions with the Kennel Club looking at uh, making that a formal program in the UK, which I think will give it more credibility and um, make it more accessible to people. So 
certainly asking about uh, the breeder's experience of bat disease is, is worth doing, but also people should be doing their research and thinking about whether they actually want one of the varieties that is perhaps higher risk um, or one of the varieties that's lower risk. As I said, if you buy a miniature smooth, which have grown in popularity massively, they are significantly higher risk for back disease than um, if you bought something like a wire or a miniature long or a miniature wired accent, for example. Yeah, it's interesting how these sort of things um, play out, isn't it, really, with you know such a small almost um, difference in breed, really? It is, and in a way, that's you know that's the really fascinating thing from the genetics point of view. There's clearly something associated with coat that you know if you t take the the, the wirehaired dachshunds, they were they were crossbred, they were smooth dachshunds crossbred with things like schnauzers and dandy dinmont terriers. So they're not as pure, if you want to use that term, as the smooths and the miniature smooths. The longs were crossed with, it's believed, spaniels. So again, there's, some, there's definitely something different about the genetics that makes those varieties less likely to have a back problem than the smooths. And we know in all sorts of breeds that when you miniaturize a breed, they end up typically with more musculoskeletal problems. Um, so it's not a surprise that the miniature varieties have higher prevalence of back disease than than the standard varieties do typically. But it is a bit of a minefield if people are just buying a Dachshund on impulse and not doing the research. And we we are really concerned about the overpopularity of the miniature smooths at the moment. They've just exploded. And um, certainly current time with all the, the COVID lockdown, inquiries for Dachshunds have gone through the roof. It's crazy, crazy. Unfortunately, there's a, a huge group of people that do absolutely no research whatsoever. I think there was a kennel club study in um, survey in 2017. Uh, there was a huge, I think it was about a third of people do less than two hours research before they go out and buy a dog on the same day or the next day, which is just crazy, really. Um, as I said, we've got the standard wires and typically we find that people have either had them before or they're experienced with Dachshunds. You've really got to want to have a wire to, to have another one. So people tend to know what they're getting themselves into. But things like the, the miniature smooths, you know, there's a whole Instagram generation that sees media stars with them. They're on Gogglebox, they're on Coronation Street everybody thinks they're cute little dogs and they just want to have one. Uh, they don't realize that they're actually they're, they're originally a working breed. Uh, they were bred to go down badger sets or rabbit holes. They were bred to bark. And people find uh, they're a bit of a surprise when they're, they're a noisy little breed to have around the house. 